All right, in this video, we'll continue the example that we started with, the liberals versus conservative example, but this time we'll use more powerful than your algebra. We'll start with this question. I'm going to assume that the voter has chosen the liberals this election, and I want to know what are the odds that they will still vote liberals and elections from today. That doesn't mean they stay liberal every single election. They could move to the conservative, back to the liberals, they could move around, but I want to know in an election, what are the odds that they're still liberals? All right, so I drew back um, that diagram. I'm going to use the transition matrix. I'm going to use a state matrix. So since they vote liberal now, that means that my starting state will be 100% liberal. So I'm going to use liberal as the first state. And I'm going to use conservative as the second. I need to... It doesn't matter which one you choose, but you have to be consistent. You have to use the same order for your state vector and for your matrix. Alright, and now my transition matrix. So again, I'm going to use liberal first, conservative second. Uh, remember, the columns are the starting state. And the rows are the end state. Alright, so if I start liberal, I have an 85% chance of staying liberal, so I have this. Then if I'm liberal, I have a 15% chance of uh, being conservative next time, so I end up with 0.15 here. Now if I'm conservative, I have a 10% chance of being liberal and a 90% chance of being liberal. Next time. Alright, so setting this up is where a lot of confusion or mistakes can happen. A quick check. is the sum of the columns that are the 85 plus 15% that should be 100% because those are all the possible outcome if you start liberal so they should add up to 1 or 100% all right so an election from now let me put this um, an election from now, that means I need to compute Pn at x0, so Pn10. I don't have a specific n in this question. My answer will have n in it. So that means I can't really just brute force this and compute p times p times p times p. I need to be a bit clever. I need to use what we've learned in diagonalization of matrices. I need to diagonalize p to be able to take high, um, big power. So one thing that's a bit unfortunate is in Markov chain is traditional to use a probability matrix, a transition matrix that's a bit P, and that's what we linear algebra people use as a change of basis matrix. So this, I'm going to keep this one at P, and I'll change the other one to another letter. So I'm going to diagonalize P, so I need to find the eigenvalues. So the characteristic polynomial of this matrix is 0.85 minus x. 0.15, I'm going to get 0 0.1 and 0 0.9 minus x. So one thing that's nice about these matrices is they add up, the columns add up to 1. That's going to help us here compute this determinant. I'm going to do a row operation. 
I'm going to do row one plus row two, and I'm going to plug that back into row one. Now this will work for three by three, by for four by four matrices as well. If you add up every row to row one, you should get something nice. In this case, I will get one minus x, and I will get one minus x. I haven't changed row two, so let me put that back in. So row one, uh, one minus x, one minus x, I can factor this out. I'll get 1 minus x, 1, 1, 0, 15, 0 0.9 minus x. And you can see that this is nice because I already have one of the factors uh, for my characteristic polynomial. And you'll see that 1 is always an eigenvalue for these matrices. So I get 0 0.9 minus x minus 0 0.15. So I get 1 minus x, 0 0.75 minus x. So my eigenvalues are 1 and 0 0.75. my eigenvectors. If I take lambda equals 1, uh, p minus i will be 0. Oh, sorry, that's not right. It's the other matrix. So it was 85, was it? Yeah, 85 minus 1, so I'll get minus 0 0.15. I'll get minus 0 0.1. Oh, that's plus 0 0.1. Minus 0 0.1 is over here. And this is 0 0.15. And so that's going to reduce to... Um, I'm going to get, if I divide by this, I'll get 1. This is the same thing if I add them. And here I get 10 over 15, which is 2 thirds with a minus. All right, so my eigenvector for 1, I'm going to use, I'm going to use 3. Let's write it out, I'm sorry. So a, B will be, so if B is 1, A is 2 thirds, S, I'm going to take S equals 3, and so my first vector will be 2 and 3. Alright, so I have my first eigenvector, my second eigenvector, I'll use Um, lambda equals 0 0.75, so P minus 0 0.75I, that will be 0 0.1, 0 0.1, I'll have 0 0.15, 0 0.15, that reduces to 1, 1, and so I'm going to take I'm going to take AB equals um, 1 minus 1S, so my second vector will be minus 1, 1. Let me double check that that's what I use. Yep. So my change of basis matrix that would diagonalize this, I'm going to call R. So I'm going to take R to be 2, 3, minus 1, 1, and I'll have D, which is the two eigenvalues. So this vector has 1, this vector is 0 0.75, 0, 0. 
So what we get is that R A R inverse is D or R A is R D R. Alright, now we're ready, sorry, R D R inverse. Alright, now we're ready to take powers. So A to the N So A to the N would be R, D, R inverse to the N, which we know is R, D to the N, R inverse, and our D to the N, well, when we take a diagonal matrix and raise it to a certain power, we just take the diagonal entry to that power. So R stays 2 minus 1, 3, 1. D to the N will be 1 to the N, 0, 0, and 0.75 to the end. And R inverse, well, it's a 2 by 2, so it's not too bad. I get 2 minus, minus 3, so I get 1 over 5. And then I switch diagonal entries and flip the sign of the anti, of the, of the other two entries. And now I just have to take this product. Let me bring the 1 over 5 up front for now, and I'll have this is equal to 1, so 1, 1, minus 3 times 0 0.75 to the n, and then 2 times 0 0.75 to the n. Alright, and I multiply it again. I'll get 2 plus 3 times 0 0.75 to the n. And I'll get 2 minus 2 times 0 0.75 to the n. Then I get 3 minus 3 times 0 0.75 to the n. And I have 3 plus 2 times 0 0.75 to the end, all of that divided by 5. So now that I have, oh, it was not A to the N, it was P to the N. Sorry, habit. So it's P to the N. Now that I have my transition matrix to the N, I can compute my N. My N state vector, and I can conclude, I can answer the original question. So here, x to the n is p times x to the 0, uh, p to the n. And so it's going to be that crazy matrix. I have 2 minus 2 times 0 0.75 to the n, 
plus 3 plus 2 times 0 0.75 to the n. My original state factor was pretty simple. It was 1, 0. That's because we knew that the voter was voting liberal, so 100% liberal. So if I multiply this out, I'm going to get just the first column, so 2 plus 3, 0 0.75 to the n. 3 minus 3 times 0 0.75 to the n. This vector includes the probability of the voter voting liberals in an election and conservative. We were only asked for one of those two. So from this vector, we get that the probability of voting liberal is this one. This is the probability of conservative, so the odds So the odds of this voter voting liberals in N elections is 2 plus 3 times 0 0.75 to the N over 4.